loads of reasons the comedy store is a massive challenge to a comedian. You know, when you start doing comedy, it's always the last um, venue that you tend to do because it's the hardest. I mean, they have two uh, shows a night at the weekend, so two on a Friday, two on a Saturday. And if you do the late show, they're tired, they're bad tempered, they're really pissed mm. as well. So if you go on last at the late show, you go mm. on at 20 past two in the morning and you can imagine what sort of state people are in by mm. then. They're mm. either kind of homicidal, dead or <laughs> suicidal, none of which is particularly conducive towards, mm. you know, comedy. Uh, well, this is a place that um, I'm relatively at home in, uh, although obviously I'm not at home. Um, it's very familiar. I've been in here for 26 years. Um, but it's a nice studio too. I like the purples. I like the colours. I'm a person for colour. What about this tie, for example? This is one of my favourite places. Um, yeah, as a student, I used to, uh, I guess, living in London with no, no money, it, the, the galleries were free, uh, you know, the National, um, the National History Museum, other museums were all free, so it was yeah. like something to do on a Sunday. But I, I always, always loved natural history, so. Uh, but dinosaur, I mean, I've, I've always loved dinosaurs. As a kid, I, I it was before dinosaurs were that popular, actually. You know, before long before the days of uh, Jurassic Park, and I used to look at books on dinosaurs with uh, wonder and uh, amazement. I, I used to dream of being a paleontologist when I was about ten years old. Oh, that or an animator. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's great fun to see the dinosaurs. Born in the house and lived there till I was about 22 or 3, I think, apart from being in the army. And I liked it, it was a very good place. It was horrific to think of that whole street of over a hundred houses, each one of these bloody great iron ranges going, pouring out smoke. Incredible what it must have been like. I remember that smog of 1956 or whenever it was. That was horrific. I've never known anything like it. I walked with my girlfriend from posh Wimbledon by the common where she lived to my house and back again. And this smog, where you literally couldn't see a hand in front of your face. The Whispering Gallery is a place that I have been to at least once a decade for all of my life so far. And uh, um, it's kind of a touchstone for me through life. I, uh, I kind of meet or reconnect with my earlier selves, the earlier versions of myself who were there. Mm. Uh, and then also, um, I like this metaphor. The metaphor is that St. Paul's is the inside of a head, mm. uh, specifically the inside of a writer's head or an artist's head. And uh, it's called the Whispering Gallery, of course, because if you stand on the other side uh, of the dome and whisper, uh, just, mm. just, 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 just whispering at this volume, uh, then 
because of the, because of the acoustics, um, the sound waves go all the way around, and someone on the far side of the dome can hear you. Um, I like the idea that this is actually a metaphor for the characters I write, for the uh, people I create. They're mm. they're from me, but they are sort of transformed by the acoustics, or or in the case of writing, by the narrative. I chose the shed because, um, firstly, it's a really beautiful venue inside and out, and it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb on the South Bank, I feel. It's just this big red box. Um, and also, it's a space that I was given the opportunity to work in a few years back on a show, and it's also a temporary theatre, so it's not it's not permanent um, and I wanted to make it permanent in the portrait. It's just a place I love. When I was living in East London, in East Ham, it was kind of like real typical inner city with kind of inner city problems and the landscape was, well, there wasn't landscape really, it's just cars and buildings and concrete jungle. But I could be in Epping Forest in 10 minutes or so yeah. um, in one part of it. 20 minutes and I'd be deep into the forest and so it was a great place to escape to. It looked nothing like London, yeah. which was just a kind of few minutes away. And I used to just go in there and I used to really enjoy getting lost and just mm. finding my way back. Well, I, found, I chose St Giles Church, and actually this little area is because that that is the the sort of spaceship that's landed in the centre of this this little area, um, because it re it represents my my beginnings really. Um, it, it, it's the first time I would come up to London in those years from about 1986 through 89, where I was starting to take my portfolio around, find publishers, meet other people, meet other creators, writers, illustrators. Um, everything seemed to happen in this little locus. Uh, and from, from all the places where we gathered, we could all always see the church. The church was in the centre of everything. I chose Baratalia because I like being there and um, I feel comfortable there. I, have, I go there on a regular basis. I like espresso, I like Italy, I like the patino, this is the only place left with the floor that's been worn out, the terrazzo has been worn out with feet. There's perfection in this place 
and a bohemianism in this place and a meeting place in this place and it's full of memories of mine since I was a lad.